to be back in London. Wonderful. <laughs> Tubbs, this room hasn't changed a bit. I haven't done a thing to it. Not since you lived here with Tilly. <laughs> Come now, Tubbs. You haven't done a thing to it since the Boer War. <laughs> a spot of tea? Mmm, please. Here. Have a shot of rum. It'll keep the fog out. No, thanks. Tell me about Tilly. It was very sudden, wasn't it? Oh, just like that. She was planning to leave for America. She had her tickets and her passport and everything. All ready to sail tomorrow. And then she got the grip. And in three days, she was gone. Poor Tilly. What's become of her children? I have them here with me. They're asleep inside. You know, a landlady feels a kind of responsibility for things her tenants leaves behind. I know, Tubbs. May I see them? Oh, certainly. Come on. Come on. They're adorable. Twins, they are. This one's Joyce, and that one's Johnny Jr. after his father. I never met Tilly's husband. What was he like? Oh, well, Johnny Gray wasn't like some of them Americans boasting, bragging, and <laughs> blowing like a tea kettle. <laughs> she must have loved him very much, Tom. She did. And I couldn't blame her. He was a soft-spoken gentleman. Lots of times. No matter how hard I listened, I couldn't hear what he was telling her. <laughs> Does he know about Tilly? No, not yet. She was trying to locate him through the Red Cross. She cabled his division, but they'd gone back to America. And him with them, most likely. But surely he would have let her know. No. That's why she was going to America, to try and find him. But he couldn't have just sneaked off. I didn't think it of him. But lots of them did. Only last Sunday, I was listening to one of them soapbox orators, you know, in Hyde Park. Oh! he was rabbit about the situation. 50,000 of our good British girls, he says, married American GIs. Lend leases all right in its way, but are we lending our girls or are they leasing their boys? Moreover, he says, I'd like a glass of beer or a good day at the races for every girl was left behind. <laughs> Kids and all. <laughs> But how about those children? Yes, how about them? What can we do with them? We can't just turn them over to the state. What then? They have a father. He should be made to look after them. Yeah, but who, my girl? Who's going to make him? Bevan? The Labour Party? Or the United Nations? No, Tubbs. I am. Huh? You're balmy. Don't be idiotic. I'm going to do that for Tilly. She'd have done it for me. Hell. I'm going to use her passport and her passage and take those children to their father. I've a little money saved up. It's not much, but it'll see me through. But her picture's on the passport. Then I'll put my picture on it. But that's a criminal offence. Not nearly as criminal as putting those children in an orphanage. You can't fool the army and the Red Cross and everybody. Can't I, though? Who's to say I'm not Mrs. Johnny Gray? Mr. Johnny Gray. That sure is a beautiful library you doped out, Mr. Gray. What do you know about libraries, Frank? I'll bet you borrow all your books from your friends. We're sure gonna feel proud when that building is up. Well, you can tell your children you worked right alongside the man who built it. 
Oh, did you get those blueprints for me? Oh, gee, I forgot, Mr. Gray. Well, you'd better get them or you'll be lying to your kids when you're telling them you worked with me. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Miss Hello. Evans. Hello, dear. Lois, darling. You look beautiful. Why shouldn't I? My best fellow sent me orchids and he's taking me out to lunch. Oh, think nothing of it. I haven't seen your new office yet. Hmm, not bad. It's almost as large as father's. Well, I don't mind if his is larger. After all, he started the business, he's entitled to it. Oh, the new library. It's lovely. I'm proud of you, John. You're only out of uniform a year and you've designed a new library. Thanks. If you want to belong, I'll get you a card. Sliding ceiling. That's perfect. Yes, you can read in the sunlight, and if you don't like the book, you can toss it through the roof. <laughs> you have such wonderful ideas, John. You're the best one I ever had. Tell me, how do you account for your success, Mr. Gray? You mean with you or in business? Both. Well, I was born in this town with nothing in my pockets but my hands. Then one day I met a girl named Lois. That's where I decided to take my hands out of my pockets and put them to work. I got one around her shoulder and one under her chin. And she was such a weak character that when I asked her to marry me, she said yes. And that, my dear, is how I became the greatest success story of our time. Oh, you idiot. And if I don't run this business into the ground in 10 years, it won't be because I tried. Yes? A cable, Mr. Gray. A cable? See, you're becoming international, darling. Anything wrong? No. Are you sure, John? No one could ever accuse you of having a poker face. No, no. Uh, it's nothing. Well, if it's nothing, let me see it. No, it's business. Uh, personal business. Just remember that two can play at that, John, and you've started it. Hello, Lois. Hello, Father. Come on, you two. I'll take you to lunch at the club. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to go. I just had an important inquiry from Europe. Inquiry? Yes, from England. I've got to find out about it. They want you to go over there? No, they want to come over here. Well, turn it over to your assistant. No, I can't turn this over. Oh, come on. It can wait. No, it can't. Lois, I'm afraid John is going to be just like I am about his work, and you want to watch him. He's liable to turn out to be a tired businessman. I may turn out to be just like Mother. I may tire quicker than he does. Gray. Call Dr. Davies. Tell him I'm on my way over to his office. It's an emergency. Bob? Hello, John. How's the bridegroom? Don't look like an emergency case to me. Well, I am. So don't be so darn cheerful. Sit down. Thanks. Oh, well, what's the trouble? Bob, you're my best friend. Oh, that's bad. Well, if you're putting it on a personal basis, I suppose I can't charge for the visit. What would you say if I told you I might have been married a couple of years ago? Yes. And you're afraid Lois might find out you're divorced? But I might not be divorced. Huh? Oh, I know it sounds complicated. That, my friend, is the understatement of the century. But what would you say? If you might have been married and might not have been divorced on Sunday at high noon, you might be a bigamist. I just got this cable from the Red Cross in London. Your wife, Tilly Gray, and family have sailed aboard the SS Argentina, I hear say, American Red Cross. Wife and family? You didn't lose very much time. But I don't know this Tilly Gray. Tilly, pretty name. I don't even know if I married her. You know, John Gray is a very common American name. There must have been thousands of them in the army. Probably a hundred in your division. Just tell the lady she's barking up the wrong Gray. Anyway. The minute she sees you, she's going to know you're not her husband. But maybe I am. Maybe she'll know I am, and I won't know if she is. Oh, now, fella, I'm just an MD, not an analyst. If you want my advice, come clean and stop talking in riddles. I'm ashamed to tell this story. You know, everybody thinks I was a hero, wounded in action and reported missing. When you came home, the whole town turned out for you. You see, the night before my division left for France, I had dinner in the Kit Kat Club in London. On my way home in the blackout, I heard an air raid siren. I was running for shelter when I bumped into a lamppost and knocked myself cold. That was the bad wound. Well, I lost my memory completely. For six weeks, I dropped out of the world. That was the reported missing. 
Then I was picked up in a suburb of London and taken to the American hospital. So instead of being a hero, I never got out of London and I never got out of bed. You had a complete amnesia, huh? Complete? Those six weeks are a total blank. Bob, is it possible that while I was out of my mind, I got married? That's the time most people do it. But could I have married and had a family and not recall a thing? Well, of course, with amnesia, anything is possible, but uh, why didn't she look you up? Well, it was just before D-Day. She must have thought I was with my outfit in France. And you don't remember anything about her? Nothing about her or myself or anything that happened. You don't even remember your honeymoon? Honeymoon? I don't remember saying I do. You don't? No, I don't. And what's more, I don't even know if I did. You've been robbed. Yes, you're in a little trouble, all right. A little trouble. I'm going to lose my fiancé. I'm going to have to live with a wife I've never met and bring up a family I'm not sure is mine, and you say I'm in a little trouble. Brace up, John. You'll come through. I'll come through with a wife and family. How many kids can a man have in six weeks? I think a fellow in Canada holds the record. Quintuplets. In the luck I'm running in, I'll have six. If it's six, you'll make a fortune from postcards alone. I could jump right through that window if I didn't think it'd hurt your practice. How do you do? Do you bet? Hasn't your old man showed up yet? Oh, he should be along any minute. Mrs. Gray's gonna live in Rochester. We'll be in Tucson, Arizona. That shouldn't be far. I hate to walk it in my bare feet. Well, cheerio. And good luck. Cheerio. Cheerio. You bet. Cheerio. cheerio. Well, Mrs. Gray, it's strange your husband isn't here. We cabled you were sailing a week ago. I don't know what to make of it. Something must have gone wrong. Maybe I could go to him. Is Rochester far from here? Rochester, New York. Or is there another one? There's Rochester, Minnesota. Two cities with the same name. I suppose this country's so big they ran out of names. Well, which is his home? Uh, New York. Will that take long? Well, about six hours. You take the 6.15 and you arrive about midnight. And then you could surprise your husband. Yes, sir. I could, couldn't I? Mr. Gray, I've located another John Gray. Oh, good. Where can I reach him? He works at a gas station. They're getting him on the phone now. How many Grays does that make? Uh, six all told. And I'm the lucky seventh. Hello, Mr. Gray. Hold on. Mr. Gray, Mr. Gray. This is Mr. Gray, Mr. Mr. Gray? Yeah, European theater. Sure, I was in London, old thing. Well, Mr. Gray, your wife and family are arriving from London today. My wife and family? Hey, what number do you want? Now, you got the wrong grave. I did not have no children whilst I was in the army. Look, buddy, I don't take that insinuation from no man. I happen to have a wife and family right here, see? And I wish they was in London. Are you sure we've exhausted all the grays in town? A big town like this? Yes, you're the only one left. Just because I'm the only one left is no reason to pin them on me. Sandwiches again. Oh, John. Well, there's so much coming up, I'm afraid to leave the office. After tomorrow, I'll take over your diet. Yeah, thanks. Among other things. Why? What else is wrong with me? Oh, I don't know. You're such a dreamer. You're always thinking of something far away. Well, that's not fair. After all, you're judging me at the office. I'll be a different man at home. Well... Since you won't be dragged out, I'll be running along. See you at dinner. Oh, but darling, I told you the boys are giving me a bachelor dinner tonight. Oh, darn it. Can't I go? No, it's 100% stag. They'll just kid the pants off me and pull a lot of practical jokes. Ooh, sounds ghastly. Well, let them have their fun. They were single ones. A telegram, Mr. Gray. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha. 
Oh, the boys. They started to kid me already. The boys. <laughs> funny as all that? Oh, it's funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> What's it all about? Well, it's not the kind of thing a man could tell his fiancée. Surprised Western Union would take it. Oh, Western Union will take anything. Well, maybe they will, but I won't. But darling, it'll be years before you think this is funny. Perhaps you can tell me on our wooden anniversary. But I'll stop by for a drink before the party. Don't bother. You'd have to rush so. Take your time. Be with the boys. You're all such fun together. Come in. John? I'm in here, Bob. I brought this along just in case. I've got it all figured out. First of all, what's the most important thing? Postpone your wedding. No, no, I mean about the situation tonight. You've got to meet Tilly, my wild English bride. And your family. Her train arrives at 12.15. You can sneak away from the party and head her off at the station. Take her to the York Hotel. She'll like that. It sounds English. I called up and got a room in your name. Thanks, old man. That's very nice of you. Just use my name anytime. Thanks. Now, when you get back to the party, stand in the doorway and signal to me. If there's one kid, hold up one finger. Two kids, two fingers. And so on. And if there's a family resemblance, I mean, if they happen to look like me... I'll give you this. You have a Mr. John Gray staying here. Yes, madam. Uh, suite 720. Well, this is Mrs. Gray and their children. You may go up to his suite if you like, and he can register for you later. Oh, would you take those bags up to Mr. Gray's suite, please? Oh, oh no, really. I I'd rather not. Not quite yet. But why not? Well, uh, I don't look presentable. I, I want to freshen up a little and... Well, the children, you know how it is. But you can bathe in his suite. But I'd rather not. Why don't I get a room and, and freshen up a little and, and give myself time to compose myself and, uh, and fix the children properly? Well, if you'd rather. Mrs. Gray will take a room. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, are you there? Are you there? It's her. She. Ooh. Tilly. Yes? Put me through to Johnny Gray, please. This is he. Him. He. Where is she? Where are you? New York? No, I'm here in Rochester. A at the station? No, here at the hotel. She's here at the hotel. You can't get a room in any hotel in the country, but she got one. Oh, they'll do anything for you here. When did you want the boat to meet us? I was sick. I couldn't make it. You're not well. Oh, how beastly for you. I'm so sorry. We missed our train and the Red Cross put us on a plane. Our, our first flight. The children loved it. How many, uh, in your party? Are you joking? No, no, I'm not joking. How many children did you bring with you? Just and Joyce and Johnny Jr. Would you like to talk to them? Can they talk? Of course. Here, darling, say hello to Daddy. Are you there, Daddy? I'm Johnny. Will you come to see us, Daddy? Well, soon, Johnny. Hold on, I'll send you a big kiss. Say you are, Joe. Speak to Daddy. Are you there, Daddy? I'm Johnny. Will you come to see us? I'll send you a big kiss. Hold on. Affectionate, aren't they? Well, tell your mother not to leave the room and I'll phone her later. What did she want? Me? What do you think she wanted? Life's catching up with you, John. It's way ahead of me. It's a funny feeling talking to kids for the first time when they may be yours. Too bad you missed the period when they were crawling. That's when they're cutest. Yeah, isn't it? What are you going to tell Lois? Well, I can't tell her I got them for a wedding present. Tonight, with nobody can deny, 
Were you looking for someone? Yes, Mr. John Gray. He asked me to wait in my room until he telephoned. But it's getting so late. Just a moment. I'll speak to the manager. The police department has been swamped with work since John Gray's engagement was announced. Women all over the city are lining up to sue him for a breach of promise. <laughs> now, John Gray, you're going to have to answer the charges of all these cast-off women. Riley, let them in. Come on, girls. Go and get her. Twins? She said she was told to wait in her room until she was called. Say, I'll bet she's the payoff to all those girls the chief of police dug up. <laughs> That's a very funny gag. <laughs> Mr. Bruce, this is Mrs. Uh, Gray and the children. Hello. Well, now, aren't they cute? They look just like Mr. Gray. Do you think so? I'll bet someone had to scour the town for a pair like that. Just follow me, please. Scour the town? <laughs> Now, there's your daddy, children. Just run up to him, throw your arms around him, and yell, Daddy. Do you think they should disturb him now? Oh, sure. Now's the time. The other act's finished. Act? Go ahead, kids. Now. it off fine. It's all over. You can go in and get the kids now. Yes, I think I'd better. They seem to be annoying him. Don't you think it's bad taste? It's just a gag. I'm the Toastmaster, Dr. Davies. This is Mr. Evans. How do you do? Good evening. <laughs> and of course, you know this man, John Gray. As you say, of course. Hello. I suppose you want to put the children to bed. It's very late. Won't you be seated, ma'am? No, thank you. Uh, let's go and have a drink, Mr. Evans, this way. These are fine kids you have here. Don't you mean fine children you've got? Please, not here. Exactly, as you say, not here. Charming of you to use the children for a joke like this. Well, it wasn't my idea, and this is far from a joke. This is your bachelor dinner, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you're getting married again? Well, that was the general idea. How horrible. How could you forget the woman you loved so quickly and, and, your, and your two beautiful children? Madam, believe me, you've got the wrong man. I haven't any children. Oh, how miserable of you, denying your own flesh and blood. Why are you so sure they're my flesh and blood? Are you or are you not John Gray of the 18th Airborne Division, Rochester, USA? I'm the John Gray of all those things, but I'm not the one you're looking for. Oh, yes, you are. And these are your children. I thought... I thought you'd be proud of them and want to bring them up as real citizens. Now, look, if it'll do any good, I'll have my lawyer comb this country for your husband. And if you'll just let me know what the trip costs, I'll be glad... That won't be necessary. I thought that when you saw these children, that it would bring back your bad memory. But since it hasn't, I'll go to the Red Cross and the Army, and I'll see that your children get justice, even if I have to go to the Supreme Court. She's still here? Yeah. She's taking the chair and leans it against the elevator. She's picketing you, John. Well, how am I going to get up to my room? Just go right past her. I can't go past the picket line. You could if you were sure she didn't have the right. If I could just remember. From here on in, she isn't going to give you a chance to forget. And I had a photographic memory. You don't start remembering, you're going to have a photographic finish. Well, the kids aren't mine, I'm positive. Oh, come on, Johnny. Only fools say they're positive. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. Huh? Say, John, I'm not an analyst, but maybe I can help you remember. How? Now, just lie down here and relax. Let your mind drift back to 1942. Drift back? Is it all right if it floats back? What does the word drift bring to your mind? Drift brings draft, and draft brings beer. Come on, let's have a drink. Do you recall being drafted? I was the first number out of the fishbowl. You remember the boat? The boat? The Atlantic Ocean. Boy, was I sick. Remember Ireland? I was the greenest thing in Ireland that day. 
Do you remember arriving in London? Sure, it's the good old London. Did you meet any girls there? I met one at the canteen. I danced with her. Well, come on, let's dance. Maybe the action will help you remember. <laughs> said to her? No, but I remember she walked off the floor and left me in the middle of the dance. Well, can't you recall what you said? It must have been personal. You better take it easy, John. You've got a big day tomorrow. Forget tomorrow. I'm trying to remember yesterday. Alcohol won't help you. Donald's a brain. Not my brain. When I've had a couple, my brain clicks like a button. I can hear it click. Sometimes it clicks so loud it wakes me up. Does your brain feel clear now? Hear it click? You're in London. Oh, yeah. Camp outside of London. Training. Commando tactics. <laughs> Just a minute, soldier. You follow me. I'm a captain. Oh, pulling your rank on me. Deploy. Retreat, never. Strategic withdrawal. What's the objective? The objective is to get to my room. Oh. What's the matter? That beachhead's too dangerous. Is she still there? Yes, but she can't outlast me. I'm going out through the back. There's only one solution. Get plastered. Dent another lamppost, get amnesia again, and forget the whole thing. You ever have amnesia? I ain't had magnesia since I was a kid. Not magnesia. Amnesia. What's that? Nature spelled sideways? Amnesia is a loss of memory. You don't know who you are or what you're doing. One more of those, and you wonder who you are or what you're doing. It's like stepping onto a brand new planet. No responsibilities, what a time. Only you can't remember. That's why, I may have been married. I may have had kids. All in six weeks. What could... Talk to a good start. What's next? Then you go out and find the lamppost. They ain't hard to find. There's one on every corner. Then you get about ten yards away. And you gotta remember to keep your head down. You missed, didn't you? Well, it's not so easy when you're out of practice. Yeah, I guess there's a knack to it. Peter. What's the matter with him? Magnesia. Hello. This is Desk Sergeant Blake, 3rd Precinct. Are you Mrs. John Gray? Yes, 3rd Precinct. Police Department. Mr. Gray has just been brought in. He was in an accident. An accident? He's your husband. You better get over here right away. Is he badly hurt? He ran into a lamppost. Was he driving the car? There was no car. He was walking. Who is he? What's his story? His name's Gray. He's got a bad bruise. Looks like he was talking when he should have been listening. Drunk as the Lord. Riley said he was drinking magnesia. What? And he hit a lamppost. 
Well, he must have started it. Lamppost only hit back in self-defense. He claims the lamppost pulled a knife on him. His wife's here. Oh, she can come in. You better pull yourself together. Your wife's here. Is that your husband, madam? Is he badly hurt? He'll live. Can you identify yourself? Uh, uh, I have my passport. But would you mind telling me what for? For the records. Yeah, Tom, you'd better get a receipt for a valuable package like that. Are you a British subject? Yes, but my, my husband's an American. One of those GI brides? There's a story in this at that. If I got a wife, I got amnesia. That is in London during the war. He even had a family, they tell me. Did he have amnesia in England? This is the first I've heard of it. Twins. Boy and a girl. You can take him home if you want to. Thank you. Hey, let me out of here. Place is full of cops. Oh, Mrs. Gray, don't let him go around denting city property. You want to take better care of him. Yes, I think I'll be able to take much better care of my husband from now on. That hyper will knock him out. Don't take any phone calls and don't let him see anyone. He has to have complete rest. I'm leaving you in charge. Was there anything in the papers this morning? It was too late for the morning edition. He's lucky it's Sunday. I was worried about that. But Monday's paper comes out this evening. Monday's news on Sunday. <laughs> Strange country. If you need me, please call. Thank you. I've been speaking to on the phone all day. Yes, I am. I've got to see Mr. Gray before Father gets here. I'm sorry, he's asleep. And Dr. Davy said I no one... I don't what Dr. Davy said. I must see him. I'm his fiance. I'm his wife. His wife? Where is he? I'll fix him. Please, sir. There's a sick man in the next room. He'll be a darn sight sicker when I get my hands on him. You can't go in there. What are you doing here? She's his wife. That's who she is. Oh, then she's the one. The mother of his children. Children? The loveliest twins. It's all in the paper. We're disgraced. He's made us the laughing stock of Rochester, the whole world. British bride and G.I. reunited in jail. Mrs. John Gray arrives from England with twins to greet husband in jail. Oh, this is awful. Uh, he's just an unscrupulous gangster taking advantage of your inexperience. Please be quiet. You'll waken him. I hope I do. But if I don't, when he does wake up, you tell him we're through with him. I'll expect his resignation in the morning. Come in. Mrs. Gray, the manager told me to move you and the children into Mr. Gray's suite. What? He only gave you the other room temporarily. Come on, Lois. Let's get out of this. Bring a rosy pocket, love holy ashes. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, children. Good morning, Good morning, Doctor. How are we doing? He hasn't stirred since you left. He slept for 28 hours. I'll snap him out of it. Poor fellow. I'm sorry, but I can't sympathize with him. Why not? He's got a lot of things any man would envy him for. The children, you. Oh, please, let's leave me out of it. I see. Well, what else happened to the poor fellow? Oh, everything. He's been asked to resign from the Architects Club, the Luncheon Club. Mr. Evans sent him a paper to sign, and several newspaper men called. He's in for some terrible shocks. I'll try to break it to him gently. Thank you. John. John, wake up. Come on, Johnny. Hey! What's the idea? Snap out of it, John. What year? What, what day is it? It's 11 o'clock Monday morning, this year of grace. Oh, disgrace. Hit it Lois phone? What happened? Nothing. Now, don't worry. Everything's all right. Miss Evans postponed the wedding. To when? And that's up to you. Was she upset? What did her father say? They were very upset you were ill. 
You said you needn't come back to the office till you're all well and straightened out. I'll never be straightened out again. I'll see that you are. I'll be right here. Right where? The children and I have moved into your suite. What? What for? There's a shortage of rooms in the hotel. Yeah, but you'll have to get out. There'll be a scandal. If the newspapers ever link our names, I'm ruined. Besides, Lois and her father might drop up. They won't. Mr. Evans left this paper for your signature. You the little helps, which will keep me away from business for some time. I hear by tender. This is a resignation. Well, I guess I resigned from the family, too. Maybe it's just as well if she'd walk out on you like that. Yeah, walking out on a guy when he's sick in bed. Count your blessings. You've got your health and two of the loveliest children in the world. <laughs> Give me a chance. What are you going to read, Daddy? The foreign situation. What's that? Nobody seems to know. Let's say I'm going to see Daddy. You're it, Daddy. You're it, Daddy. I'm it, all right. You guys find us, Daddy. All right, but don't go too far. Give me that moon. Ever see a guy? See a broom? <laughs> What's the matter here? You broke my balloon. Come on, I'll fight the three of you. Me, I. Go on, get out of here, you little muck. What's going on here? They ganged up on me. Three against one. What's the idea of shoving my kid around? Well, keep him away from my kids. You broke my balloon. He's stuffed. He's a liar. You little crybaby. Go on, you little brat. Whose kid are you calling a brat? Yours. an old man, you brat. Come on. But how could you? Well, he broke Johnny's balloon. The big brute hitting a man half his size. Half whose size? Why did you do it? Well, his kid was picking on these kids. And naturally, you had to protect your children. Not naturally at all. The question of fair play. But supposing Johnny and Joyce had been wrong? But they weren't. But they could have been. Couldn't they? No, they couldn't. They're not that kind of kid. Feeling better? Yeah. You know something? You're very soothing. When I'm near you. Why do you say that? You forget me so soon. Well, I didn't mean to. Right now, I'd like to give it as much rest as I can. Can I put it there? Put what where? My head. When did I first meet you? It was in Selfridge's department store. You came in to buy a pair of gloves for a lady. You were in uniform and you looked very handsome. For a lady, huh? I was certainly making the army a social success. You told me her hands were my size. I tried them on and you said, keep them. I know no other lady in London. Well, then did we get together? You were waiting for me outside the employee's entrance. You took me to dinner and we went to a cinema. I was really putting on a campaign. We saw each other every night after that, until we were married. What was the honeymoon like? We went to Brighton. Three beautiful days. Wonderful, balmy nights. It would be my luck to forget weather like that. We were really happy. Ecstatically happy. Were we? Yes. 
We were happy then. And all the time, I never knew you were having amnesia. Neither did I. I didn't know what I was having. Strange. It's, it's like being with a total stranger, not a husband. Yeah. That's the way I feel, too. It was like a dream. Are you sure it wasn't a dream? I think I hear Joyce. Did you hear anything? No. I guess it's no dream. Those kids are real, all right. Until you've had children, you've never really lived. Yeah, but you've never really lived until you've really lived. Oh, what a beautiful night. Sort of reminds me of Brighton. Now, don't start thinking about Brighton again unless I can be along. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but I loved you the first moment I set eyes on you. You did? Don't you believe me? Yes, that's the awful part. I do believe you. Everything you told me about our marriage, our honeymoon, everything. You sure picked one heck of a husband. I've never been sorry. Johnny, you mustn't kiss me. Why not? Not yet. We haven't the right. But we're married, aren't we? Yes, but you don't love me. You were going to marry that Evans girl. Oh, that's all off. Look, we're man and wife. That makes it all right, doesn't it? No. It's only all right if a man and wife love each other. There's not one case in a million. John, I, I've got to be sure you love me. But didn't I buy you a pair of gloves? Take you to the movies on a honeymoon and marry you. But you didn't even know what you were doing. I know what I'm doing now. Johnny, you mustn't kiss me. It doesn't feel right. It does to me. Johnny, please. Why don't you just relax? You'll live longer. Please, sit down over there. And drink your coffee. No, it'll keep me awake. We've got to adjust our lives. We've got to get acquainted all over again. After all the trouble I went to in London? It'll take time. Time? I've got to devote all my time to starting a new firm. I'm getting up at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning to look for offices. And so, Mrs. Gray, it's time we were getting some sleep. I'm not tired. I'll read a while. You're going to ruin your eyes reading at night. I'll turn on all the lights. But that'll wake the kids. They've had a hard day in the park. They're growing kids and they need their rest. And so do you. Why, I, I've never known you to be so stubborn before. I'm not stubborn, but I never knew what I was doing before. No, you didn't even know you were marrying me. It's what makes me feel so strange. But you said you loved me. Yes, I did. Then how can you forget your promise? Promise? To love, honor, and obey. I love you. I respect you, but... But you won't obey me. Obey you? Yes. I'd like to get some sleep. Well, go ahead. Don't let me stop you. You see, that's what I mean. I'll even obey you. Some fine day. Some fine day. Is that a way for a wife to talk? Some fine day. What's the matter with now? Johnny, it's going to take time. You told me that already. Let's talk this over calmly. Honestly. Seriously. Practically. Reasonably. Oh, John, please be reasonable. Reasonable? I am being reasonable. Look, I'm your husband. I'm the father of our children. You're my wife, aren't you? Yes. Then let's get some sleep.
That's what I thought. Bob. Bob, wake up. Hmm? This is vital. What? What's happened? This is an emergency. You've never been anything but an emergency since I've known you. Were you thrown out of your hotel? Worse. I was thrown out of my own bedroom. By whom? By my wife. Your wife? Yes, she is my wife. She convinced me tonight. I bet that didn't take much convincing. But she doesn't treat me like a husband. Well, maybe you don't appeal to her. Maybe you're no longer her type. You're crazy. She was madly in love with me. For the first time she saw me, she said so herself. Oh, but you're not the man you were. You were an entirely different personality when you had amnesia. That's the man she fell in love with. A soldier. A gay, charming fellow with nothing on his mind but love. That's all I had on my mind tonight. Oh, it'll take time. She has a right to see if she loves this uh, other personality. This new character who struts around in John Gray's body. You make me sound like a second-hand car. And she has the right to trade you in. Trade me in? The way I feel now, she couldn't get a good deal from me under the table. It's hard to be worthy of a girl like Amy. I'm past being worthy. She's the mother of my children. Why do you think I married her? I'm wondering why she married you. She's a wonderful girl. Oh, you like her, huh? Mm-hmm. She's a wonderful girl. You said that. Now, look, Bob, I'm asking you to think of something for me, not you. I am thinking of you. But if she doesn't love you, why don't you leave her alone? Aren't you overlooking a few small items? What about our twins? Well, if she decides not to stick, uh, you could each take one. Not on your life. She's not going to break up the set. I'm so sorry I kept you waiting, but I dressed as quickly as I could. Mrs. Osgood, my director, asked me to bring you to our office. Would you mind coming along? Of course. Is anything wrong? Something the matter? Well, I'm sure I wouldn't know. But I have my station wagon outside. Shall we drive down and see? Of course. Now then, since we know this passport was issued to Mrs. John Gray, nay, Tilly Loomis, would you mind telling us who you are? I'm Amy Atkins. We lived together, Tilly and I. And yet you never saw her husband. During the Blitz, I was in the south of England. When the children were evacuated from London, we organized schools for them. I taught in one of those schools for three years. Then why were you so sure this particular man was the father of her children? Oh, I'm sure he's the right man. Perfectly ridiculous. Do you realize that you have ruined an innocent man and brought scandal to one of our best families? But I'm sure, so sure. If I weren't, it would be awful. The name John Gray in America is almost as common as uh, John Bull in England. Yes, I know. And the two Rochesters in America. You admit forging a passport, making illegal entry. Unfortunately, you have committed a crime. And since you're still a British subject, you will be deported to your country where your case will be handled. You will return the two children in question to the Red Cross in London. Is that clear? Yes. Perfectly. Perfectly clear. Would you please tell Mr. Gray we've gone? Yes, Mrs. Gray. Are you leaving us? Yes. When is Daddy coming? Later, darling. Any forwarding address? No, no, none. Have a pleasant trip. Thanks. You'll be very comfortable at the York Hotel. And it's only for one night anyway. Mrs. Gray? Yes? Mrs. Gray, there's a letter for you. Letter? It's from Tubbs. <laughs> What is it? Have you ever seen that man before? Well, yes, of course. That Mrs. Jenkins is the Mr. John Gray in question. Is it Tilly? She was such a sweet girl. This was taken on their wedding day. <laughs> Here's one of the twins when they were six months old. I should say that sort of changes things, shouldn't you, Mrs. Jenkins? We'd better go down to headquarters and find out. But these are his children. These pictures are proof. They'll be returned to him. But your status is still the same. Illegal entry, you know. Yes, I know. But it was so worthwhile. 
I knew John couldn't be guilty of a thing like that. It was a great shock to me. You know, I pride myself on my judgment of men. If he was guilty, it would have been the first time I've ever been wrong about a man. Oh, Father, I think I knew him better than you did. After all, I was engaged to him. He should be here any minute. It's going to be a little embarrassing after the way we tossed him out without giving him a chance to explain. Forget it, that's the past. And stop walking up and down. I feel as if I'm at a tennis match. Oh, all right. But I hate to start off with him in the driver's seat. Well, maybe you'll have to content yourself with being a backseat driver like your mother. Yes? Mr. Gray is here. Oh, yes. Send him right in. Hello, John. Come in. Hello, John. Hello, Lois. Sit down, son. You can't imagine why I've sent for you. No, I can't. We owe you an apology. Let me tell it, Lois. As a man of over 50 years, I speak from long experience and observation. I've never gone wrong in my judgment of men. I judged you as the type of man I wanted in my family, and I'm glad to say that my judgment is vindicated. Well, that's fine, but... What Father's going to say when he gets around to it is that the case of that adventurous has been investigated. Adventurous? What adventurous? That English woman. A complete imposter. She saw a good thing try to kick you into marriage in the support of her children. Oh, just a minute. You're being ridiculous. I have the proof. A signed statement. She confesses to forging a passport, posing as another woman. She's being deported. Deported? Father, I wish you'd let me speak with John alone. Very well. I've got work to do. Take her in your office, John, my boy. John, you may kiss me. Thanks. She certainly fooled me. Oh, darling, you're so naive. Any pretty woman could fool you. Yeah, I guess so. Now we can pick up where we left off. We can thumb our noses at everyone who laughed at me and get married after all. Uh, yes, of course. Unless you've changed your mind. Who, me? Oh, darling, I was sure you hadn't changed. Look, Lois, I've got to call the hotel. Go ahead. No, not here. I don't want to use this phone. Why not, silly? It's going to be your office again. Is it? John, are you by any chance in love with that girl? Are you trying to put ideas in my head? Well, then don't be so vague. Don't you want to marry me? Sure. Then let's get married right away. Tomorrow, we can get ready. Yeah. No elaborate wedding this time, just the family and a few friends. Yeah, a few friends. Then it's all settled. Sorry to disturb you, Mr. Gray. I'm just returning your children, then I'll go. My children? Yes, the Red Cross has checked them. Checked them? Poor darlings, they're asleep. Where shall I put them? On the day bed. But I thought the Red Cross said... We have definite proof now that they are your children. Good night, and good luck, Mr. Gray. They're splendid children. Good night. Anybody tell you different? Have you been asleep, Daddy? Yes, but I'm awake now. Night, night.
Bob. Hey, Bob, wake up. Wake up. You gotta help me. Can't you get into enough trouble during the day? Do you have to wake me up every night? Well, do you think I like doing this? But honest, Bob, it's... If you say an emergency, I'll strangle you. And tomorrow I'm getting you another doctor. Look, that cinches it. I was married, all right. Married? Who's this wife? She isn't yours. Yes, but that's another wife. How many wives do you want? You're marrying Lois tomorrow. I know. Well, that'll make three. Even with inflation, the government only allows one wife to a customer. Now, don't worry about it. It's simple. What simple? You read that. I'm a widower. But I thought you said the other night you were convinced Amy was your wife. Yes, but I found out today she isn't. Well, what was she? Just an innocent bystander? No, she wanted to bring my kids over to me. Oh, I see. She's a great girl. Well, they're deporting her. I wouldn't have believed it myself till I saw her statement of the Red Cross. I've got to help her. You've got to help her. Oh, we've got to help her. Can't you square it through Evans? You know, that's a fine favor to ask your future father-in-law. You have to tell Lois. You can't say you got those two kids through a mail order house. What'll I do? I don't want to see her deported. She won't be. She won't? No, because if I have to, I'll marry her myself. What? Oh, no, I couldn't let you sacrifice yourself like that for me. That won't be a sacrifice. It'll be a pleasure. What? Amy's a wonderful girl, and I happen to think enough of her to marry her, if she'll have me. Why, you hypocrite, trying to steal my wife! Advising me, and all the time you're in love with her yourself. You couldn't fall in love with Lois. Oh, no, she isn't good enough for you. You have to fall in love with my wife, the mother of my children, the only woman I ever loved. You, my best friend, my doctor. Well, this is the end. I'm through with you. You can get yourself another patient. What a spot. How can I pull a couple of kids on a girl who thinks she's marrying a bachelor? Especially Lois, she always wants to do everything herself. Well, I'll have to tell her. Lois, they're my children. I only found it out myself last night. But she's liable to say, well, if they're yours, John, I'll love them and I'll bring them up. Those twins may grow up to be president. And I can't run out on her again. I'll have to marry her. But how can I when I love Amy? And if I don't hurry up, that sneak Bob is going to get her. Can't let that happen. She's too good for me. Well, I suppose she's too good for me, too. But she's used to me. Hey, you. Huh? Walking in your sleep? No, officer. I was just taking my constitutional. Don't you know what ain't constitutional to be walking around the streets in your long drawers? Well, I had to get out of bed in a hurry. Huh? I didn't have time to dress. These are pajamas. Well, if they're pajamas, you ought to be in bed. Not necessarily. I'm wearing a raincoat, but it's not raining. Oh, got your kidding pants on, huh? No, they're pajamas. You look very familiar to me. Ain't I seen you someplace but... Oh, it's you. You're great. I wouldn't be surprised if I am with all the trouble I've had lately. I must have turned gray overnight. Huh? I wouldn't bat an eye if you told me I was white. Well, get off the streets and go to bed or your name will be Mud. It's no use. I can't sleep. I got insomnia. You've got more high-class diseases. The last time I seen you, you had amnesia. Officer, I wouldn't admit this to everybody. But I not only don't know who I am, I don't know who you are. What, again? Go on, Scram. Where? Where do I scram to? Hello, this is Mac. Ask her if she's got a friend. Get me to city hospital. John. Oh, he'll be here soon. Well, I hope he's more punctual at the office. Oh, he'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, where is he? We've phoned every police station. Bob's contacting the hospitals. 
Well, I hope you're satisfied. Oh, Judge Henderson. Oh, Lois, my dear, you look lovely. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Humphrey. This is a happy day. Thank you, Judge. You see, Lois, it was to be. Won't you step inside and join the guests? Thank you. Where's the lucky bridegroom? Oh, he's on his way. Well, Frank, we've waited a long time for this occasion. Yes, we have, Humphrey. And we're still waiting. What are we going to do now? They're all here, even the judge. Where is that lunatic? I hope he hasn't had an accident. An accident's too good for him. I've located him. He's on the way. They're bringing him over. Who is? Where? City Hospital. The hospital? What happened? It's just a temporary lapse. Lapse of what? Memory. Amnesia. What, again? Oh, I'm sure he'll snap out of it. He did before. That's the end. He can't be out of his mind. He never had one. John has a good mind. Well, then why is he always going out of it? Don't shout at me. You're his best man. Who else can I shout Father, at? Father, control yourself. Control myself? Please. I advise you to control yourself, too, Lori. Huh, that's the funniest medical advice I ever heard. My wedding at noon, my house full of guests, the groom hasn't shown up, and when he does, he'll think he's somebody else. There's the ambulance now. Here comes the groom. A fine way to go to your wedding. When my time comes, that's the way I want to go. Come in. Hey, what's going on here? A wedding? Anyone I know? Your coat, sir? I'm Dr. Davis. You can leave him in my charge. Right, Doctor. Hey, don't leave me alone in a strange place. John, don't you know me? Have we met before? Don't you know what day this is? Friday. I had fish for breakfast. Don't you know what Friday? Well, I know it isn't good Friday. Nothing good's happened to me since it started. The man's mad. I've heard enough. Don't you remember we're to be married today? Are you looking at me? Of course she's looking at you. You're the groom. Who, me? Yes, you. Well, I'll do anything to oblige you, but I can't get married in these. I brought your clothes. Oh, you did? They're in here. Snap into them. Hello, Amy? 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 Can't you say anything else but Amy? You've got to be careful. Where are you? Isn't a powder room for ladies? Maybe, but not this one. Oh, darling, I'm so glad I found you. The Red Cross is picking me up in a little while. I'm catching the afternoon train. Darling, you can't do that to me. Are the children? I know they're not yours. They're mine, but what's mine's yours. No, Johnny, I can't. I have no other choice. Amy, wait! Please. No, no, you mustn't. Amy, wait there for me. Don't leave the hotel. Cheerio. Amy, wait there for me. Hurry up, John, will you? Mr. Evans, the police are outside. The police? What for? The motorcycle escort for the bridal couple, sir. Good. That is nice of the chief. Something tells me we're going to need a police escort. All right, let's go. Oh, John, you're not dressed. Well, the invitation said informal. That settles it. Get him out of here. Who, me? You're too irresponsible and crazy to marry anybody. You mean you're not going to marry him? I most certainly am not. Well, who asked you to? Let me handle him. Let you handle him. Get him. out. Get out before I kick you out. Oh, no. You sent for me. I didn't send for you. Where are you? <laughs> and Evans are pals. It's Evans' daughter. We only go to the airport. Hello,
delirious when they brought him in. He kept repeating your name. Is he badly hurt? No, it's just shock. He hit his head on the field, most likely. Amy, darling. Oh, John, darling, you all right? Yes. You're not going to leave this room. We're going out of here together. We're getting married. I'm going in there, orders or no orders. Get behind the screen. Find his fiance. You've got to let us in. You're as crazy as he is. You're not going in there. Oh, yes, I am. This accident could have cured him. I'm his doctor, nurse. Oh, very well, doctor. John, what happened to you? I just got twins. <laughs>